good morning everybody uh, so today the topic of my discussion goes on to 3d printing or additive manufacturing so uh, first of all uh, we'll go through the introduction part of this additive manufacturing where well, we know that additive manufacturing is uh, the need of the hour nowadays in the manufacturing world where the new technology with its uh, advent of this internet protocol and with uh, digitization in manufacturing additive manufacturing is playing a huge impact in manufacturing of various kinds of products uh, numerous materials can be applied in the additive manufacturing domain both metals and polymers ceramics so this is having a huge impact in the manufacturing sector not only that in the civil areas where construction of various buildings and various monuments are taking place with the help of this additive manufacturing so uh, this is not a new technology now now it's a technology which is getting evolved every day new techniques new methods new processes are getting introduced and it is getting refined every day so let us get into the details of this additive manufacturing so the topic will have contents like terms of reference various definitions capabilities of additive manufacturing the geometrical capabilities material capabilities classification of additive manufacturing with uh, reference to ASTM and based on the raw stock materials now in the terms of reference uh, we know that uh, the additive manufacturing can be seen or known in various terminologies that we come across first 3d printing we know it's a very common term we use nowadays it's basically stereolithography lithography is basically two dimensional aspect of manufacturing and stereolithography is obviously the 3d development of product now we also come across the term as additive manufacturing okay so additive manufacturing it can be additive layer manufacturing and additive digital manufacturing so both the terms are same okay so it's a layer by layer manufacturing in additive manufacturing you know that the parts are developed in layered form unlike in conventional manufacturing which i'll come in the later part so it's a layered manufacturing and why it is called additive digital manufacturing because prior to the manufacturing of the product in additive protocol we digitize the product that means we develop the product in cad platform cad means computer aided design okay so first of all in the cad domain in the cad platform we develop the product whether it is solidworks catia proe any number of softwares are available for designing and developing the uh, product in the cad domain and then with the interfacing of the computer with the 3d printing machines or 3d printing devices we transfer the image developed in the cad platform and we prepare it okay so it's also known as additive digital manufacturing another term which is very common is layered manufacturing so obviously 3d printing is a layered by layer deposition of material in of various materials polymer metal ceramics so it can be developed in layered formation so it's a layered based manufacturing and second one is layered orientation or layered oriented manufacturing because we can change the orientation of the product okay so supposing we want to develop a product okay so let's take these to be the x y z Okay. so let's this 
product be placed in an XYZ platform. So uh, we can change the orientation of the product. I can change the orientation of the product, right? So it can be in this form or it can be this form. Okay. So the orientation of the product can also be changed depending upon. See, in actually uh, what happens in layered manufacturing, if it is a regular product, then it is okay. But the thing is, supposing I have a cantilever formation like this. Okay. Supposing it's a cantilever, so if this is the base, so this part is the cantilever part. So if I change the orientation of the product in this form, okay, See, I can change the orientation of the product in this form, right? So over here, so there is no hanging part. I have changed the orientation of the product. I have just changed the orientation of the product. So in this is the advantage of additive manufacturing or developing the product in layered manufacturing. Uh, depending upon the criticality of the product, I can change the orientation of the product where I will be using minimum amount of um, added materials. Added materials means the support materials because I need support over here. Okay, there will be support materials. There might be support materials re required for reinforcements. So if I change the orientation, so there is no need of support material over here as well as the material uh, which is a support material will be saved. Now this support material is not an integral part of the um, uh, of the original product okay so that can be saved because when you are making the product and finally you have to remove this support material the support material will be removed so it is a throw away part so you are saving some material over here as a manufacturer I have to keep in mind that time and material has to be optimized okay so uh, the time taken it cannot be optimized in a sense that uh, there is a machine uh, the ma machine time is fixed but the cost saving part in regards to the excess material that can be used has to be minimized over here. So we have over here uh, layered based uh, manufacturing and obviously we can also change the orientation of the product and it will be um, taken care of in this CAD platform. And then we have the solid free form fabrication. In solid free form fabrication different uh, layered materials are developed in solid form after getting digitized in the digital platform and then we can develop it. Second is the digital manufacturing which is a digital mop up. Okay, So that is also a design part where we digitize the product and we develop it in the solid form and we, which has been developed in the CAD domain. Okay, Then finally comes the rapid prototyping tooling manufacturing. Okay. So these are the various terms of references which we come across. All the terminologies are similar to additive manufacturing. These are the various terms that are used on case to case basis related to additive manufacturing. Now this 3D printing is basically a layered formation of manufacturing the product. You see we are developing the product in the layered formation. So first the bottommost layer is prepared and then slowly we build the product. Part development moves in the Z axis. Okay, So this is the Z axis where the development of the product takes place. So layer by layer deposition takes place uh, and every layer has a typical thickness. Okay, So every layer has been distributed because this is the final volume which we will be creating and this final volume is segregated into n number of layers. Okay, So you find over here there are n number of layers which is being distributed all across the uh, volume. 
Now each layer has a definite thickness of material. See over here, there are different uh, thickness of materials. So depending upon the thickness of the material, the machining time is calculated. Okay, the machining time is calculated or the manufacturing time. Okay, the manufacturing time or machining time is calculated. So if the layer thickness is large, then the manufacturing time will obviously get reduced and if it is less, on the contrary, it will be high. So what will happen? If the machining thickness or the manufacturing thickness is large, that will lead us to smaller manufacturing time. But on the other hand, the surface will be rough in nature. Okay, rough surface. Surface will be obviously rough in nature. So uh, we have to compromise. We have to optimize. We have to optimize between surface and the machining time okay so that the trade off we have to do if we think that we need to develop the product quickly that means lessen the machining time we have to sacrifice the surface roughness we have to sacrifice the surface roughness okay surface roughness will be compromised but if you want a better surface if you want a good and smooth surface obviously you have to sacrifice the machining time okay so this is the uh, fundamental concept of uh, 3D printing. Now see, first what we do, we develop a CAD image or a CAD model in .stl format. Okay? So this is done, this CAD file is developed either in SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, ProE, so various softwares are available in the market okay and we have to save it in dot stl format dot stl means it's a standard tessellation language okay so dot stl means standard tessellation language so uh, it is embedded in this software if you save the file in .stl format then only it will be readable in any 3d printing machine okay so this tessellation is uh, about a particular format that is a triangular formation uh, that i'll be discussing in the later stage so this is a standard tessellation format on which the entire object developed in cad platform is first uh, developed and saved then we go for the g code so this is the machine language, machine language, machine language, okay. So this machine language actually is required to instruct the machine how to perform, okay. There are G code and M code, which are the series of coding, uh, which are being used for learning the machine or teaching the machine. The machine will take the instruction for the G code file format and it will understand the movement or understand the motion, understand the operation which is required in the machine itself. So when the machine language in G code and M code is given, so it is a clear instruction to the machine how to operate and how to function. So next step is converting this file into G code file format. Okay. Then we go for 3D printing. Once the machine takes this G code format file, then it is ready for operational. But still there are some activities left after we upload the G code format into the 3D printing machine. There will be another arrangement in the machine where a set of instructions are given for machine to develop the product that is the setting up of the machine okay so setting up the machine is another important task prior to actual 3d printing okay so uh, in that 
we actually develop the product through different arrangements okay where we uh, standardize the product where we uh, put the product in the right place then we calibrate the product take the temperature of the machine to the optimum level or operating level the ambient temperature okay the bed temperature okay because the object is developed on a particular bed table bed okay so bed temperature ambient temperature and the material which is coming out that filament temperature nozzle temperature all these temperature settings are being then done then the orientation of the product is checked then different uh, thickness layer thickness how it will be all these things of instructions are then given to the machine or set in the machine then we go for the final printing of the object okay so this is the last part final printing is the last part prior to that so many activities setting of the machine takes place with a lot of activities first then we go for the final printing then after the object is being developed after the object is printed then we take it out and the post processing operations are carried out that means polishing cleaning removing the unwanted part okay sometimes it is required to to cure it okay and additional heat treatment is given to enhance the strength then coloring okay so many post processing activities are still left okay so uh, 3d printing we know uh, but we also know that is a 2d printing okay so 2d printing is nothing but in a scanner we print the object so it's a 3d it, it's a um, subset of 3d printing it's a 2d printing but see on this paper there are uh, alphabets and sentences written and if you go for microscopic analysis each of these sentences and words they are written on uh, droplets of ink so if you calculate the thickness of the droplet of ink it is also 3d printing right but since the thickness are so small we are ignoring the height of the alphabet so we call it a 3d printing but if you go for microscopic analysis this is also a 3d printing okay to be in a true sense but we are calling it a 2d printing but in 3d printing we are developing the 3d objects okay the actual 3d real figures and objects so this is what we are developing a 2d printing okay on a piece of paper we are drawing the sketches and all and this 2d printing is getting reflected in the 3d printing through development of an object which is in the 3d form so there are various types various different um, dimensions of 3d printing one is the binder jetting where the uh, droplets of droplets of uh, materials are uh, infused in a on a substrate where it will be fused together and develop the object then the direct energy where a laser is induced over here laser is used laser is used to melt the flow of material in layer formation so the direct energy is being used direct laser energy is being used to melt the material and it is getting deposited in layered formation then there is a material extrusion where the filaments filaments of material are extruded okay so extruded through this nozzle okay by heating when you are heating it when you are heating it so the filament actually melts and gets deposited this is the metallic material extrusion then we have lamination okay these are the sheets polymer sheets and we are applying heat to melt or cut out certain sections of the polymer and we are applying pressure over here the roller roller is used on the heated laminates to fuse the two subsequent layers together uh, this is a sheet lamination process the material jetting where we give the droplets of material we deposit the droplets of material in layers 
so that it will develop into layers. Then we have the stereolithography where the light sensitive polymer This is my light sensitive polymer which when induced with the laser or UV light laser or UV light under the influence of this laser or UV light certain layers of this light sensitive polymer will solidify okay so in this way the layer formation of of material uh, addition in layer takes place in stereolithography well in this case what happens uh, when the material is getting solidified and it is getting converted from liquid state to solid state then you need to go for heat treatment for curing to uh, to enable strength in the material so stereolithography is followed by heat treatment powdered bed fusion we have a powdered of metals or ceramics So in this powdered bed fusion, what happens? The powdered form of metal or ceramics in microns are laid. And we have a laser system which is induced or which is uh, applied on this powdered material in layer formation. And this will melt the material. Okay. So layer formation of this powder, which is in microns, are getting melted and solidified. Okay. So this will help in developing the material in layer formation and extrusion bioprinting over here uh, laser assisted bioprinting is given where small small granular particles are embedded on the surface in the layered formation okay to develop the 3d object so now we are discussing regarding the solid free form fabrication so it refers to a set of manufacturing processes that creates three dimensional objects by sequential addition of material in layers which is commonly known as additive manufacturing or 3d printing so unlike the traditional way of manufacturing or material removal process where we subtract the material we use a cutting element which is harder than the work element and it removes the excess material from the work surface at a specific dimension and it gives the product its shape but in solid freeform fabrication layer by layer development of product takes place from the digital objects from the digitized models okay so uh, the key features of solid freeform fabrications are layer by layer constructions where objects are created by depositing material layer by layer okay so this layer by layer term is very significant because this layer thickness is very critical in this in this process okay so if the layer thickness is small or large that will have an impact on the machining or manufacturing time as well as it will also reflect the surface quality so the materials are deposited in a predefined path so this predefined path actually uh, is being developed from the g code and m code developed okay and it is fed into the machine so varieties of materials like plastic ceramic composite material nowadays all types of materials can be used in solid free from fabrication we have seen that in additive manufacturing numerous types of materials metals non metals everything are getting introduced day by day by the researchers they are developing new products every day and they are getting introduced and they are giving fantastic results okay so digital design flexibility is there okay since the objects are developed in the digital mode the main uh, the main advantage of additive manufacturing is that very complex very uh, critical products can be easily developed over here unlike in the in the uh, conventional manufacturing processes where uh, removing the part and removing the elements from the parts uh, subtracting the part will take a lot of challenges okay because you need very intricate cutting elements or cutting tools and then you need to remove it with large precisions and if it is very critical in nature then it takes 
very precise machineries or machining setup. But over here, you can have customized geometries getting developed. Okay, customized geometries means uh, micro channels, micro channels in uh, in the uh, mold boxes, My development of micro channels in the mold boxes, or varieties of complex material getting developed simultaneously on a same machining setup. Okay, that type of challenges are overcome in this solid free from fabrication. Whereas in case of this uh, traditional machining, it takes a lot of challenge, a lot of machining setup um, arrangements. Okay, so there is a reduce in waste. Okay, very less amount of materials are getting wasted over here. Okay, so in, in case of subtractive manufacturing, we know that a lot of materials are getting wasted in the form of chips when you are removing the excess material. Supposing we have made uh, from um, molding. Okay, so in uh, sand molding, we know that the surface is pretty rough. Then we go for sand blasting, and after that, we go for removing the unwanted material from the surface and making the surface smooth. So excess materials are getting wasted over here. So over here in uh, solid free form fabrication, that wastage is minimized. Minimized in the sense, well, if you are using those support structures that are very nominal in nature and that are not adding to the main uh, buildup of the uh, final part, so that can be removed. But if we change the orientation also, so that part can be taken care of by removing the, uh, by changing the orientation, we can uh, adjust the support structure part. So see, this is a working on solid freeform fabrication. See, this is basically uh, a system where we have developed the CAD design over here. In the CAD domain, we have developed the object, right? And then uh, we are saving it in .stl format, that is the standard tessellation language format. And after that, we are converting it into the G-code and encode machine format. Then we are introducing it into the machine. Now over here, what happens, there is a loose powder being spread over here and according to the design the laser will act on the powdered material which are laid on a particular layer which are laid on a particular layer over here okay this is the part where the particles are laid or evenly spread okay and particle size already as said it's in micron so when the laser is introduced or which is incident, so it will solid melt and solidify the materials. Okay, so micro um, micro welding is taking place basically. It is melting and getting solidified. So one layer is getting uh, complete. Now this is the part development platform where the first layer is getting developed. Okay, then the platform will descend. Okay, it will descend and the next layer of material will be spread on top of the previous layer. Okay, the same amount of powdered material will be spread across the previously developed layer. And again, according to the designed uh, path, the laser will be incident and the same phenomena will take place, it will melt and solidify. So the process continues and until and unless the entire product is developed, the process will go on. Okay, so the part builder platforms will slowly descend and the layers will be developed one on top of the other sequentially. So this is the working of basic uh, uh, operation of a solid freeform fabrication. So various types of solid freeform fabrication techniques are there. We know that stereolithography is one such process where the laser uses, um, use of laser is being done to harden the liquid resin. It's a light sensitive polymer, okay, the resin is uh, receiving the laser on a particular contour and that uh, incidence of the laser will solidify that certain amount of uh, liquid in layer by layer formation okay now the fuse deposition modeling okay this is extrusion of thermoplastic we know that thermoplastic when heated to a certain temperature we know that PLA polylactic acid is one such thermoplastic when it is heated up to 230 degrees Celsius it liquefies okay even if its melting point is around 80 degrees Celsius but still we are increasing the temperature to around 230 degrees Celsius so uh, it will completely melt and it will 
come out from the nozzle and it will deposit on the part builder platform in layered formation and layer by layer deposition will enable it to develop the entire object so selective laser sintering okay so over here we have the powdered material or powdered metal which is sintered sintered means when the laser is incident on the powdered metal it will melt and solidify so based on that a layer of metal will be formed and again the next layer will be developed prior to that and again the same process continues so selective laser sintering digital light processing which is very similar to sla but over here we are using digital light projector to cure a resin so the difference between uh, digital light processing and uh, and we are using uh, sla stereolithography is that in stereolithography we are using a beam of laser okay a beam of laser but over here digital laser processing or light processing we are using we are using a projector so what happens over here the size of the object is small because the light is incident on a particular spot okay so this takes lot of time if the size of the object is small we use stereolithography if the size of the object is pretty large pretty large then we are going for digital light processing where a large beam of light can be incident on resin okay liquid resin so this large beam of light when it is incident on a liquid resin for uh, then a lot of resin a volume of resin large volume of resin will be solidified so this goes for larger size objects because less time will be required you can use a uh, stereo lithography but it will take lot of time because the size of the object is now the next one is uh, electron beam melting so over here uh, we are using electron beam instead of laser okay so the process remains same but uh, compared to laser this is much accurate because we know that the particle size of electron is pretty small compared to laser okay and the kinetic energy developed by each laser is huge because the ele electron moves with the speed of light so kinetic energy developed in laser electron beam machining or electron beam melting is huge and the uh, targeted application of electron on the substrate is very accurate okay when you are using electron beam so the only part is this is much much costlier compared to laser beam machine, laser beam melting because laser nowadays it is uh, affordable but electron developing electron and electron generation is a huge cost effective affair and second is uh, this is used for extremely precision uh, object or developing of extremely precision object of high accuracy so laser beam melting can be also used in this case now uh, solid free form fabrication applications are nowadays used in various fields like aerospace automobile health cares okay so it is it has the ability to customize parts very quickly very less material wastage and uh, it is getting uh, importance day by day in the product manufacturing domain next one is digital mock up so digital mock up is a concept used primarily in engineering and manufacturing for product development so it is a very important area in product development part it refers to digital representation of physical object used for very visualization this is basically used in r and d sector okay when you are developing new product when you are when the company tries to introduce new product into the market so this digital mock up is very important in this regard so it's an integral part of cad and computer aided engineering okay so one one thing i want to introduce i want to discuss over here so this uh, 3d printing is basically a summation of cad and cam okay 
so it's a combination of CAD and CAM because the objects are developed in CAD platform. The entire uh, creation of the product is in the CAD platform. That is the computer aided design platform. And then we are interfacing it with the computer aided machining because all the 3D printing machines are governed by computer system. Right. So it's an amalgamation of CAD and CAM system over here. Right. So digital mockup is becoming increasingly important as product becomes more and more complex. Right. Nowadays we know that various designs are getting developed in day to day products like mobile phones and electronic goods, components, vehicles. Okay, intricate shapes, complex designs are coming up which requires error free design and for that the production process is getting very critical. So for that this digital mockup is very significant in the manufacturing domain. So digital uh, mockup it allows visualization for the engineers, designers and stakeholders to visualize the product before rolling out uh, uh, into the manufacturing uh, department before introducing it into the full manufacturing. So the researchers needs to visualize it, feel it, to have the real feel, okay. So we know that uh, through virtual reality, we can visualize the object, but what about the real feel, the real visualization of the project? So for that, this DMU is very important. This visualization not only just gives the impression regarding its shape and size, but also its texture, color, and material properties, you, need, you can test that, all these aspects, or the physical properties you can test. So it can be used to check how different parts of a product fits together, okay? While you are developing a complex product which has sub-sub components. So each of the components are developed and uh, designed and developed separately. So now when you are assembling it, how it fit, how it matches, that part can be addressed over here. So for complex assembly, ensuring that all parts are integrated together completely, integrated together without any interference, that can be achieved over here. So we can also go for various simulations of the product to analyze its physical properties, to analyze its performances under various conditions. We can analyze it in the, in, in the digital manufacturing uh, part. So engineers can use DMU to stimulate and analyze the performance of the product. They can use different stress analysis, fluid dynamics test, thermal uh, behavior of the products. So all these can be performed and simulated and analyzed. And after successful uh, results, they can be introduced as a final product. So uh, digital mop-ups facility, it can be uh, used for collaborating upon different teams of uh, production system that is the design uh, department the engineering department the manufacturing de department they can work together come together and they collectively they can take decisions okay reducing the physical prototypes by using DMU companies can reduce the need of building multiple physical properties thereby they can save the time and resources it will also help in reducing the errors and flaws in the design okay sometimes there might be some errors which might have been overlooked, but over here in the digital mockup that can be addressed, that can be restricted, that can be analyzed. Okay, so for that, all the technical documentation can be done. For that, all the different uh, results can be analyzed and documented for further references. So integration of virtual and augmented reality, we know that virtual reality and augmented reality are the need of the hour. The various companies are using these techniques for the design purposes. So digital mop-up is one such technique which is coming into this domain. So again, the difference between 2D and 3D, we know that uh, when you're drawing a line, this is basically 1D. When it is on a plane, it is called 2D. But when you are developing a volume, it is a 3D. But when you are attaching time along with the 3D, it becomes a 4D printing. Okay. So because obviously in the 3D, we are developing a product with respect to time. So we can term it also as a 4D printing. Okay. So I hope 
this uh, introduction to 3D printing and additive manufacturing uh, is a long journey. We have started only the first phase. I hope to continue in further lectures with the details of the additive manufacturing classes.